it's Todd Cool Tim. I'm back at my uh, wet lab here, back at my offices at Gulf of Maine Biological. And uh, I wanted to show uh, uh, my viewers a little bit, uh, teach you a little bit about soft shell clams. Uh, locally, we call them steamer clams. And uh, you can see the shell here. Uh, steamer clams are dug in the mud, uh, in the sand on the beaches on the main coast. And uh, I don't know how far south they range, but I know they range up into the Canadian Maritimes. But uh, here's a uh, soft shell clam. Uh, shell or half of the shell um, and you can tell uh, or you can see how they grow uh, in successive years you see the little rings there um, each uh, each uh, season during the summer when the plankton levels are really high these guys are filter feeders and uh, they're gonna um, be filtering uh, plankton out of the water column they have a uh, a long neck called a clam neck and sometimes when you're out uh, in fact I think I have another video somewhere showing clams uh, uh, neck squirting on the on the mud flats, but anyway, uh, sorry about all the noise. That's uh, my pump system uh, uh, and the trickling of water into through my tank, my cold water uh, aquarium. So uh, anyway, getting back to these clams, if you look on the shell, you can see some dark lines and light lines. In in the winter time, the clams are still feeding, but they're not getting as much uh, food, and so their growth rings, sort of like on a tree, uh, are closer together. But in the uh, during the summer, they grow very quickly, and because uh, in our local bay here, uh, there are uh, the plankton level or the plankton grows very well, and we've got all this productivity. Uh, our scallops, all of our uh, our bivalves, our, our shellfish, if you will, uh, grow very quickly. Anyway, the cool thing I just noticed in my tank this morning is we have a soft shell clam um, that has its uh, siphons fully extended, and uh, a lot of times you won't see this unless you go digging clams. Uh, if you're studying clams, you, you've probably learned about the, the clam siphons and how it, it pulls water in the in-current siphon and then expels water through the ex-current siphon, but we can actually see that. So uh, take a quick look at the inside of this clam shell. I don't know how well you can see it or not. Uh, you can see the, uh, the hinge at the top of the clam here, and then uh, this sort of uh, area where you see a little bit of crud stuck to the shell. Uh, that, of course, is where they secrete the... Uh, or it's where the mantle is and where they secrete the calcium to grow the shell itself. So uh, this, this shell is just what I found on a local beach. But anyway, let's take a look at this, uh, this uh, clam siphon. I think uh, our audience will get quite a kick out of it. So right here in my tank, I got a little bit of a reflection here. But there you can see a soft shell clam with this si siphon completely extended into the water column. I don't know if you can pick this up, but look on the very end and you'll actually see one of the uh, siphons open. The other one's larger. It's to the bottom. I don't think you're going to be able to pick it up, but what I'm going to do is try and reach in here. Now, there's two clams. There's one in the back, uh, and it doesn't. Uh, the, the further back one does not have its siphons out, but this one, of course, does. And um, well, All I've done is I've collected these, and I've put them into the uh, sort of cobbly bottom at the back uh, bottom of my tank. So I don't know if you can see this, but that siphon is actually moving. I think it's picking up vibrations. See that? It almost looks like an elephant's trunk or something. Pretty cool. Now, I've, I've actually never much seen, I've had a bunch of clams in my tanks before, never seen one with a siphon all the way out. And these are pretty large, large soft shell clams. So I'm going to try not dis to disturb that siphon. I'm going to grab this other clam and I'll show you what happens when you pull them out of the water. See it squirting? And so it's pulling its siphon in and as it retracts its siphon, in other words, pulling in that elephant's trunk, if you will. Uh, something has to give and water squirts out. Oh, look at them. Look at them squirting out. Pick that up or not. But you can see the mantle along the edge of the shell. And then the siphons. I don't know how close you can see what the focal distance is on this camera. And the genus of this particular clam, the soft shell clam, is called Maya. And uh, the species is Arenaria, A-R-E-N-A-R-I-A. -E and uh, we have actually have shellfish hatcheries in Maine where they spawn these. And then they take the, the spat, the baby clams, and put them out on the mud flats to help uh, with the wild stalks and hopefully get them to grow. We still have this uh, other soft shell clam here with its siphon all the way out. So I'm sorry about that reflection from the lights, but Let's see if I could grab that guy and pull it out of the water and watch how fast it's retracting its siphon. See it squirting? 
one in. You can see how the tip of the siphon is sort of a dark color. Um, that's to protect it from being discovered by birds and crabs and that sort of thing. It's almost like a camouflage or a pigment. And if we touch that, we get the animal, it's almost like a turtle, retracting his head into the shell. Now if you, I was to leave this clam out here for a while, slowly but surely it would uh, uh, kind of lose water and slowly shrink down until those those shell layers there are completely touching and uh, it, it wouldn't go into a dormant phase but it would be I guess uh, thinking it got left dry by the receding tide and so it would uh, track down try and conserve moisture and um, wait till, for the tide to come in I'm not quite sure there we go if we kind of pinch that little clam neck and you can see now we've got a got a clam that you can't even see the siphon on completely retracted in and its ability to do that is just by uh, filling up with water. So I, I guess that's it for uh, soft shell clams. These are uh, bivalves. Um, they're found in cold waters and uh, of course they get their name because uh, unlike a quahog or a hard shell clam, these shells are pretty, uh, pretty thin and they break easily. So uh, hope you learned a little bit about soft shell clams. Oh look that one just squirted again. Oh he's squirting again. Uh, here and uh, I, like I said, this is something I hadn't seen very often, and I thought uh, you'd like to see it. So, have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye.